Okay, good. Transport. Hi, panel. How are we here? Yes. Um, here's our packed panel. Um, first up, uh, Llewellyn is going to talk um, about transport. Um, good to go? Great. Um, one thing actually, before you get started, you have 10 minutes to talk. The rest of you have about three minutes. I don't have a gong, but I will gong you off if I have to. Go. Um, well, thanks for inviting me today. Um, it's terrible timing because Wales play in Australia in the World Cup. So, so. <laughs> the good news is we're winning, so hopefully that's the same by the end of it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Lord Morgan. I work uh, for Oxford County Council. I actually run um, the Innovation Service in the County Council, which uh, is not a contradiction in terms. We do do innovation. Um, it's actually grown out of transport. Um, so I used to I used to work in um, transport policy um, and development control. So that's sort of my background. Um, so I'm going to try and give you a very high level overview of what transport looks like in Oxford today, and touch on some of the. Um, <coughs> the projects we're doing around EV in particular, um, and then there's a little video that I know Emily asked me to show at the end, which I'll go through. So, um, transport, its impact in, on climate change, so I'm sure most people um, will have read some of those sort of BBC articles around uh, um, climate uh, change and the impact um, across the UK at the moment. So transport's become the, the biggest issue, I think, now, um, primarily because of Things like industry have got better, and transport has only got a tiny bit better. So it's sort of plateaued in terms of its uh, CO2 output. Uh, and that's partly through slower development in some ways than uh, thought of the technology, but also the increase in use of, of, of vehicles in, across the whole of the country. So it's, it's, it makes about 27% of our uh, carbon output in the UK. It's less in Oxford, because thankfully in Oxford we actually have quite a comparatively low level um, of car use and vehicle use, particularly for um, commuting uh, into Oxford. But um, it's still an issue. So there's still uh, 45,000 cars that come into Oxford in the peak hour, which is a lot. That's gone up a little bit. Um, generally, Oxford, since the 80s, has stayed steady, but I don't know if that's about us, our policy or management. That's generally because you can't really get much more into Oxford. So um, the medieval designs have uh, done a good job of constraining cars. Anyone who's tried to driving in and out of Oxford, and the people know that it's not easy. Um, we did a, a lot of analysis recently to inform um, the consultation that's just gone out around um, how we can manage Oxford in the future. And amazingly, 40% of trips go through Oxford. <coughs> now, I want to go and meet the sanity of these people. But <laughs> I, I could, we couldn't believe it when it was, it was that high. And that's, so that's actually a big issue. It's much bigger than it used to be. So we did, we did a survey many, many years ago. And it was around 10 to 20. So, so for some reason, the number of trips going through Oxford has gone up as a percentage of all the trips in Oxford, particularly in the morning. And, and it's, we don't quite know why. Um, it doesn't make sense on any level. But someone's doing it. A lot of people are doing it. And that's, so that's our response that's come out recently with the survey of truck. How do we try to manage that desire of going through Oxford. We, we, we want to get people in and out of Oxford and in and out of where people work at, around Oxford, but we don't want people going through because it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's something we're looking at managing at the moment, and, um, and you'll see from the, the latest consultations, there's some uh, proposals there looking at how we make manage that and then hopefully get the buses through a bit more quickly. Um, in terms of uh, positive modes, Low impact modes, we are the second highest level of cycle use in the country. We're behind Cambridge um, and York are catching up quickly. Um, so we've got to do better in that. Again, I usually say we are, we, we're a really good cycle city, but that's not because of us. That's just because people have got out and cycled traditionally. Our cycling infrastructure is bad. Um, the report by Andrew Gilligan said that. Um, the good news is if you start with such a high lab base level, if you improve it, we can get really high. So. If you look at where cities like um, Freiburg in Germany, as a cycle city of Germany now, or Copenhagen <coughs> even, their levels of cycle use and car use are much, much lower, much, much lower than us when they change their minds of how they think they should manage a city. Um, so it should mean that if we start to invest, we can really change uh, and really uplift the, 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 those numbers. 
this is, this is some work we did about four or five years ago. So we use, uh, we get mass anonymized mobile phone data to inform things like transport models. We try to take some of that out and look at it at a much higher level. So this is it's quite interesting. Ignore these because it's just a sample rate, so it's not actual, it's, it's, it is the number of trips, but it's not all the trips. The key thing is the different colors. So what's really interesting for us is, um, is the blue bars in particular. There's a big level of tr constant trips of um, vehicles in Oxford, moving in, 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 in Oxford. So the blue is inside to inside ring, ring road trips, um, which again, when, when we got the stage, it was much higher than we expected. Um, you can see that the red is the outside to inside ring road, so that's the commuters coming in, and the, the sort of green colour is the inside to outside, so that's people commuting out of Oxford generally. Um, but yeah, there's a big background trip level in Oxford, which again sort of points to some of these trips through Oxford. It also points to high levels of deliveries um, that just circle in the ring road. Uh, and it's something we've got to look to, to manage, um, and it's where data like this starts to help us. This again, this is, so this is using mobile phone data. This is a tool that was developed by the Internet Institute to start to help us look at ward data. This is um, vehicles coming into Oxford, and the redder it gets is, the, is the, the busier a place gets. You can see the busiest bit is um, central Oxford. That's probably because where the car parks are in Oxford. Um, but, and then in the evening, you can see they go back out. Um, but these are so, so this, we're starting to get better data. This was interesting because it also has cycling and walking data. And we can start to analyse um, where people are moving and where people aren't moving. And there are some things like uh, you can sort of see there's less cycle trips for people from the centre of Oxford out towards Headington because of the hill. Um, <laughs> so that's something we've got to look at. Um, but there are also sometimes some unusual things where you'd expect higher levels of cycling and, and there aren't. So you can start to start to look at well, why is that. Um, and it's the same for the, for, it just gives us an idea and indication of where we should start looking at problems. This is from some of our data from uh, the census. Sadly, it's, it's quite out of date now because we're coming up through a new one, but it gives you, again, a good indication. So our level of bus use in Oxford is, is very high. Uh, we have good bus services, particularly compared to most cities of our size. Um, so we have, I think, some of the highest levels of bus use outside of, outside of London, across the whole of the UK in general. Um, and you can see here, so, so these are the different modes of so mass transit. Essentially, that is primarily buses. Uh, there is some trains within that. This is motor vehicles, and then the one on the end is walking and cycling. Um, so you can see between 2001 and 2011, there was some positive change in terms of movement away from the cars. But you can also see there's a big issue in Oxford as a whole in that um, the Eastern Arc is very private car dominated. Um, and it still is today. And I think those figures have gone up even a bit. Um, and that's why you get the congestion around the edge of the, edge of the city. Some of the issues there are just the disparate patterns, that the employment's all around, it's not in the centre, so it's a bit hard to serve. It's hard to serve for uh, the bus companies as well, because there's multiple end destinations, start destinations, so that makes it more awkward. And in terms of walking cycling, the cycling infrastructure is not great around the edge. It's sort of good in bits, and absolutely awful in others. Um, anyone who's tried to cross over that part of, the, of Oxford will know it's not always fun. Um, so those are, the, so those are the sort of areas that we really need to look at. Um, the city centre is pretty good in terms of people cycling and transport coming in, except um, there's always an issue with the congestion that the bus companies have to sort of try and tackle. So just thinking about how does city work, um, this is something we looked at with a group called Mobox, which is a community interest company that we work with, um, trying to start to understand transport um, so it's so the, the thing we sort of boil it boils down to is it, it's all around density um, and capacity so you have the capacity of the networks and the de and then the density of how you use that and as you can see um, this is a really good picture in that cars clearly aren't a very good use of the capacity we've got buses and cycling are definitely the better ways of doing it and, and if we don't do anything we end up with that um, and, and, and that's, you know, that's something we've need, always got to have in the back of our minds. Um, this is something we try to do as well, is start to look at users' modes into the city and how you, can, how you can look at where you might start to try and encourage people out of different modes and onto different modes. So this is sort of distance boundaries. So from about four kilometres out, 
Cycling is still an option for your journey all the way in. Clearly you want to get people onto buses, out of the car, using the park and rides. Um, and then reduce the amount of people who drive all the way in and park and then walk for the last mile. So the other important thing is no one, very few people, um, just use a mode to get to work or go where they're going. They nearly always involves some walking. Um, in Oxford, it involves multiple modes. Um, so mine, I live in Northamptonshire. My journey to work uh, sometimes is cars to the park and ride, cycle in. Sometimes I go to Vista and get the train in. Sometimes I go to Vista and take a bike because I have to go somewhere else. So I, I'll have walk, cycle, and train in a day. And I don't. And, 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 we, and it's really hard to start to manage that. Um, we don't have the commercial tools that London does to sort of help people inform you of, them, of your, all the different mode choices you have. Um, and that's something we've been trying to work on, is trying to make that more attractive. Um, and that's why we started to work with other cities across the whole of the ARC area to try and pool all our data together to try and get people like the likes of CityMap, for etc. Um, and Google even to have better data on how we, what your mode choices look like. This is the one minute warning. Yeah, cool. I've been told I had extra time for the video. Oh yes, the video doesn't count. The video yes, doesn't there we are. So, okay, good. <laughs> Everyone's keeping to see a video, right? Okay. Um, so what we're, what we're trying to do as well is get much better data. So our, our cycling data has been really bad. Um, we have loops on the cycle lanes, but the majority of people in Oxford cycle down the roads. Um, so recently we put out 80 cycle detectors. These, these, these count all modes, primarily that's pick up cyclists, but this is interesting in that <coughs> this is uh, the plane, just north of the plane, and it, already you can start to see how important cyclists and pedestrians are in terms of a mode into the city centre, but also it's starting to pick up the, the yellow is LGVs, so that's the delivery vehicles again, so that's something we need to think about. Um, but what we've got now is, is a real-time data source, so we can start to do things and assess the impact of that. Um, so we've still got, we, we still expect there will be vehicles moving around Oxford, um, particularly um, freight, um, people who live here, and the buses. So we're trying to do more to uh, encourage EVs. Um, the City Council has done lots of work already in terms of the taxis and at-home charging on, on the residential streets. We've got a few projects now. So there's one called V2Go, which is looking at um, how do we get people, the fleet operators to move their cars over to, um, the vehicles over to electric quicker. And that's looking at vehicle to grid. So that's where you can sell your energy back to the grid using your battery power. So it just starts to make the commercials a bit better. Um, we've got another one <coughs> we've just got funding for, which is with Virgin Media. So that's using their network as the, as, as the, the backhaul network. So that's where you connect into the electricity. Um, that's going to be really interesting because they've obviously got a lot of network out there. Um, so we're going to have 50 to 100 in Oxfordshire. Probably will be in Oxford, I suspect, as it's going to be where Virgin Media is. Um, that's just started off. Um, and then we've also got a really interesting one that's around the whole county called Park and Charge, which is using council-owned car parks um, as hot charging hubs. So it's a different way of how do we deliver EV charging to people. So all this is really interesting because the main thing we're trying to work out here is what does the commercial model look like? So the big thing to say about transport is government has quite little influence over a lot of what, what happens because transport in Britain is really commercial, it's deregulated. So you've, we have to work with the commercial sector to work out how do we solve some of these problems because you have to make something that works for everyone. Um, we can make up some of the rules and regulations of how you use the network, but the main thing, the way, way people interact with transport is through the services, and the services are commercial, essentially, outside of London. So this is what we're trying to do a lot more. We've got a number of projects now that we're working with partners to look at what are the new commercial models for future transport. Um, and I'll show you the video. So we did a video um, two years ago. So the National Infrastructure Commission challenged us to think visionary um, and also develop an, some of my proposals that will stimulate debate around last mile transport in Oxford. Um, instead of de delivering a strategy document, which is what we were asked for, we actually did a video because we thought it was much more interesting and they might actually look at it rather than a 50 page track to jump. So this is, this is just a short end clip of what we did. The full video's on, on YouTube if you Google sort of Oxford 2050 transport thing. That's really bad music. So.
So there you go, yeah. An underground for Oxford. It's not controversial at all. <laughs> Very easy to do. It is to do with Elon Musk told us it is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the principles there are about mass transit, cycling and walking, and actually making Oxford a better place to be in, in the centre. So that's what that's the sort of underlying themes, how you get there. There can be multiple different ways, but maybe that, I think, for, for, ne for the next session even, uh, for the next weekend, it's about what do you want Oxford to look like. And for transport, we also have to adapt around that to how people want uh, Oxford and the city to look like. Um, so that, yeah, that's my... That's the end of life theme I'd leave people with. Great. Excellent. Um.